You're watching Bread and Roses. Hi everyone, I'm Maram Namazi. And I'm Fari Wurzpuya. We're sorry we were away for a few weeks, but we're back online again. In this week's program, we're going to be talking about the absurd attempt by the absurd anti-so-called fascists who tried to stop Iranian LGBT from marching in the Pride Parade in Toronto, though they failed miserably and the LGBT activists went ahead and received a lot of love. Yes, and the march uh, coming to London 8th of July. Yeah, yeah, come and join us. Interview this week is with Ensaf Haydar uh, um, on Rauf Badawi's fifth anniversary of imprisonment. We'll also be talking uh, about an insane fatwa which gives permission to men to marry female jinns. Wow. And the slice of life is? On Ramadan and how people in Tunisia marched against... Uh, a you know, enforcement of Islamic rules. Yeah. Stay with us. We hope you enjoy this week's program. You might have seen the shocking video of Iranian LGTB activists trying to join Pride in Toronto, Canada, and they were surrounded by Antifa, the Antifa, which are what they, the anti-fascists call themselves, this group that's called Antifa. Uh, shouting, saying no hate in pride. Uh, I mean, is this the twilight zone? These are LGTB activists from Iran joining gay pride and they're trying to stop them. They Absolutely. didn't succeed, of course. Of but course, they managed to sort of uh, uh, they? brush them aside. Um, with, and they received so much support from, the, from everybody else on the march, apart from this isolated group. And that's a trend which is really, really, uh, you know, destructive. Uh, anybody from Islamic religious societies can have a right because he upsets their Islamist friend. You've, I mean, got, this is you've amazing. got people dressed as they want, loving who they want, one guy even like practically naked. But when it comes to Iranian LGBT, they don't have the right because they're going to offend or because it's Islamophobic. Why is it Islamophobic? Why is demanding the right for LGBT in countries where people are getting killed for being gay which are the countries which kill people for being gay? They're all countries under Islamic rule. This, Why is that wrong to say that? And this group and people like this needs to be exposed. These are reactionary, supposedly anti-fascist. They're not. They're just pro-Islamist. Anti-fascist some of the time. Yes. They are pro-Islamist, pro really. And they are very destructive <clears throat> and against human rights of, you know, people in Middle East. North Africa and everywhere else. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the fact of the matter is that people who are from the Middle East, from North Africa, from South Asia, people who are questioning and criticizing Islamic rules around uh, gay people, LGBT people, uh, you know, one of the guys in the protest had a sign saying, I'm Muslim and I want to defend gay rights. And they're shouting, no hate in pride. I mean, this is like the topsy turvy world of the. Uh, you know, Antifa in, in Toronto. Well, well done to them. They managed to march. We'll show you some of the video. It is really wonderful because they get lots of support as they are marching. And we're going to be marching in London on July 8th uh, with a focus on Islam and uh, the fact that all the countries that punish uh, homosexuality with death are Islamic uh, states and those ruled by Islamic laws. Uh, so hopefully you'll be there if you're in London to support us and we should be supporting LGBT from the Many Middle East, North countries. Africa without yes. condition, un unequivocally. There's a huge sort of battle going on in <laughs> Turkey and many other countries. So let's, uh, you know, let's put our hands together in solidarity, yeah. march on 8th of July in London and come and join us and and, and the Antifa needs to decide I mean are they pro gay rights or are they pro Islam uh, it's That's clear what, it's clear where they stand yeah, they pro, pro Islam pro Islamist really fundamentally anti gay rights because you can't just be pro gay rights for yourself and not for everybody else not for brown people not for black people um, you know so this is a great time for us to push that message forward uh, you know, gay rights for everyone, not just people who live in the West. You heard that from Mariam Namazi.
a few weeks ago when Ensof Haydar, the wonderful wife of Raif Badawi, the Saudi free thinker who's been in prison in Saudi Arabia, uh, was here in London to mark the fifth anniversary of Raif Badawi's imprisonment, we had a chance to speak to her. And what an amazing, wonderful woman she is in her own right. Absolutely. The case <clears throat> of uh, Raif Badawi actually epitomizes the reality of a struggle in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia is not just the reactionary sheikhs and Islamist um, government in power. The other side of the Saudi Arabian society is people who are fighting for freedom of expression, for right to think and change society. And there's hundreds and hundreds of people doing that. And Rauf Badabi represents all of them. Mm. And, and just not only people in Saudi Arabia, but across the world. Sure. And in Saudi Arabia, of course, we're hearing more and more cases of the like. And it's, I think, partly due to the fact that we've been able to hear so much about Raif's case from his wife. But it includes people like Walid Abu Khair, who is uh, Raif's lawyer, who's also been given a long prison sentence. Mm. Uh, people like a recent... Uh, um, young in his 20s, an atheist who's been given the death penalty for blasphemy. His name is Ahmad al-Shamri. And of course, there's other, other cases of women as well mm. who are trying to escape, like Dina Ali, who were then abducted and returned back to Saudi Arabia. So you're hearing of this resistance yes. through these various ways. And um, when uh, um, Ensof spoke <laughs> in London, um, she said that the peaceful expression of thought it's a non-negotiable human right. Yeah. The right to be able actually to express your view and want to change the society. And he says there is a revolution going on in Saudi Arabia and many Islamic within societies and new generation which is globalist, which is wants change, is modern, mm -hmm. is spreading everywhere. And that's the force that we need to support. Yeah. And this is important. She has a very important message uh, and we need to support her and well done to her for the, yeah, the work that she's done. She's amazing. And just to say that, I mean, Raif Badawi has been in prison for five years out of a 10 year prison sentence. He's been given 50 lashes out of a thousand lashes. The lashes have stopped, though they haven't been cancelled, and yeah. it's because of public pressure. So we need to keep the pressure on. Yeah. We want to see him released. And don't forget, it's suppose his, his sentence is not only the 10 years in prison, which is enough, but it also includes a 10-year ban on travel yeah. and includes a 10-year ban on doing any sort of media work or writing. And his family, his three kids, his wife, yeah. they are in Canada. So what we're calling on uh, both the Canadian government but all governments is to give Raif Badawi citizenship, to release, help have him released immediately and that he needs to be reunited with his family. But again, all those in prison for their expression of their views, for, uh, you know, freedom of conscience, freedom of expression must be released immediately. Yes, let's uh, uh, listen to what Ensof uh, uh, said to <coughs> Bread and Roses TV when she came to London. Okay. Uh, it's wonderful to uh, be able to finally meet you. Uh, can I please, thank you, can I uh, just tell you why are you here today? What are you uh, commemorating? I am here today in London. The uh, first reason is to is thanks to uh, the organization Reporters Without Borders and, uh, and Pan English, of course. They organized a trip for me. I am very happy to be here with you today. I really felt that there's solidarity and support from uh, the London people in London. The, the support comes from a lot of directions, not only specific individuals. So I'm really happy to see that. It's going to be five years Rife is in prison. Um, uh, what, what are you hoping for? Why are you continuing your campaign now? I, I never lose hope on his case. I always keep on hoping and working on it. Freedom will be soon for Raif. He will be soon. I have hope even in the Saudi system. I'm not negative about it.
عندي امل كمان عشان الشعب العالم كله متضامن معنا I have hope also because I see the solidarity at the international level as, as I feel I'm not alone the solidarity of the people the international community is very necessary for us and it helps us a lot how are you holding up and also your kids and drive yourself أكيد أولادي يعيشوا في حالة انتظار يعني أولادي حرموا من أبوهم من هم لساعهم waiting state waiting for their father so it's very difficult أكيد الوضع صعب ما راح أقول سهل ولكن نحاول إننا نعيش بشكل طبيعي and to live in a normal way and while waiting what do you want people to continue doing شو بدي كل الناس يكملوا يعملوا أنا بصراحة يعني I أي صوت بيندد بحرية رأي أكيد يعني لي كثير. I am very happy and every uh, sound, every voice of anyone supporting Raif is really matters for me, matters for us. أتمنى منهم إنهم يستمروا. I hope that they continue uh, in their this fight and this ما support. ما راح أقول سياسة معينة ولكن أصواتهم حري الحرية اللي رأيف تكفيني إنهم يقولوها. The, the, the fact that they express أحد. support for Raif for his release is matters a lot to me. Any kind of support, and this kind of support is already sufficient for me. Well, just to say that Raif is a hero for all of us, but so are you. Who is the leader? Raif, for us, and for him. Of course, and we'll keep fighting until he's free. 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 Dix ans de prison, mille coups de fouet pour des phrases pacifiques. C'est injuste que notre père soit en prison. Il n'a tué personne. Là, ça suffit. Il a juste créé un blog. Ce n'est pas illégal. On a trop attendu, on a besoin de voir notre papa. La chose qui me manque le plus chez lui, c'est son sourire très contagieux. A Mauritanian sheikh, and I'm sorry, I'm going to have to read his name because it's so long and you know what that means, long name, stupid fatwa. Sheikh Ahmad, a walid, il morabat, walid, habib, ar-Rahman, very, very long name. He has basically said that if a male marries a female jinn, which is a supernatural being, it's okay. But if a woman marries a male jinn, it's haram. You see, um, um, how surprising is that? The stupidity continues. <laughs> <laughs> Idiocy continues. It's a whole uh, universe of jinn studies in Islamic societies <laughs> and religious sort of societies. The whole sort of they believe in jinn and supernatural beings and. Even you know we don't have to worry about that. But the even fact so, that even in those sort of uh, yeah, exactly. universe discrimination it's anti-woman <laughs> a woman can't do it but a man is free even to marry a jinn aren't you men lucky yes you must be running out now <laughs> looking for the closest jinn you can find add it to your four five six wives oh whatever temporary <laughs> permanent yeah enjoy <laughs> enjoy <laughs> <laughs> In Tunisia, a group of people have come together to defy fasting rules and to defend the right of people to eat during Ramadan. It's a basic human right, really, isn't it? Why does it bother you if I eat? That was the slogan and the comment by one of the protesters um, in Tunis. Mm. And the fight against uh, um, Ramadan and restrictions 
it's global. It happened in London as well. It did. There was a fastifying process in London. And of course, there are lots of protests, including in places like Morocco, for example. There's Palestine been a history yeah. of this. And it's basically the idea that, of course, you have the right to fast. But why does it have to bother you if I'm not fasting? Why do I have to be arrested, persecuted, harassed because I am uh, not fasting because I want to eat during Ramadan? So it's a great Great, really wonderful Absolutely. form of and protest, isn't and it? It's happening everywhere. It <clears throat> will spread because forcing Ramadan down everybody's throat, it's against human rights. So well done to protesters in Tunisia and everybody else from Palestine to Iran to London and many other countries. And we've reached the end of our program. We hope this was an interesting program for you. We're sorry again that we weren't around for a few weeks, but we're back again online. And we hope to see you again at the same time and same place next week. Until then, bye. Goodbye. And I'm Fadi Bospuya. We're hosting a program called Bread and Roses. It's a weekly program that's broadcast in Persian and English in the Middle East and North Africa, primarily Iran as well. And it's also shown on YouTube internationally. And we've been doing this since last May. We're coming up to our year's anniversary and yeah. we, we've had quite a lot of fun making these videos. We discuss taboo breaking, free thinking ideas. The Islamic regime of Iran has called us immoral and corrupt and that's why the, you need to support us we are and the vo alternative voice in Middle East and North Africa of corruption and immorality so do support us here's a short video from patreon that explains how you can help us with even just one dollar a week that's nothing support us patreon lets fans become patrons of their favorite artists and content creators it's different than Kickstarter because it's not about one big project that requires lots of funding. It's more for bloggers or YouTubers or web comics, anyone who creates on a regular basis. Here's how it works. When you become a patron, you're agreeing to give an artist a tip of an amount you set every time they release a piece of content, whether it's a new song, a video, or a recipe. You can set a monthly maximum to make sure that you're always within your budget. Choose an amount, enter your payment information, and you're done. Becoming a patron allows you to view and post in the artist's stream. And in exchange for your support, artists offer additional patron packages, which might include monthly Google Hangouts, music production tutorials, pre-sale concert tickets, or anything they can offer as a way to say thanks. Patreon, empowering a new generation of content creators.